We'd like to thank Montecito Bank and Trust for their generous support in making Scam Squad possible. I'm Patty Teal. And I'm Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson. Scam Squad is up next. Sound off. One, two. Sound off. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Scam Squad. Welcome to Scam Squad. I'm Patty Teal here as usual with Deputy District Attorney Vicki Johnson, who keeps us apprised of the latest scams so that we can stay away from them. How are you today, Vicki? I'm very well, Patty. Thank you. Oh, that's great. So I've talked before about how we have to be careful of what we put out on social media, because as it turns out, it is a rich source of material for scammers. I know we have talked a lot about that. Now, how prevalent is it to be scammed on social media sites? Well, this is interesting. A recent report from the Federal Trade Commission gave this statistic. More than one in four people who reported losing money to fraud in 2021 said it started on social media with either an ad, a post, or a message and more than 95,000 people reported about $770 million in losses to fraud, all of which started on a social media platform. Oh my gosh, that is a frightening statistic. And it should make all of us really be very careful about how we're using social media. And those are just the reported cases. As you said, there's probably many, many more. Absolutely. And from the the scammer's point of view, there's a lot to like about social media. It's a very low cost way to reach billions, billions of people from anywhere in the world. And it's easy to manufacture a fake persona like we've seen in romance scams, which by the way, are the second most profitable fraud on social media. So according to this article from the Federal Trade Commission, losses to romance scams have climbed to record highs in recent years. And Patty, based on the phone calls I'm getting here at the office on my fraud hotline, this scam isn't going away anytime soon. And that is such a particularly heartbreaking scam where people feel so embarrassed and foolish. It just can be devastating. Um, And then I remember back to the case with uh, our guest, Judge Eskin, when a scammer hacked into his email account and posed as his friend asking for money. And in his case, the scammer even knew his daughter's name. So it really seemed legitimate. So, Patty, I said that romance scams were the second most profitable ad for scammers. And this is something we haven't talked about that much, but the first most profitable scams are investment scams, and especially those that involve bogus cryptocurrency investments. Apparently, scammers will use information that people share on social media to target them with bogus ads. So the scammers use things like a person's age, their interests, or their past purchases. Well, you know, it just seems to me that these scammers are getting more and more sophisticated. And because they're getting more sophisticated, it's harder to spot them, which makes them all the more dangerous. That's right. And it's when I'm thinking about this, uh, whenever I purchase something on, you know, any kind of a site, what pops up immediately are a million different ads for that same kind of product. So clearly somebody's watching what it is I'm doing on, on these various sites. So, Patty, here's something else that I found interesting. We often talk about how scams target seniors, but according to this FTC report, people ages 18 to 39 were more than twice as likely as older adults to report losing money to these scams, and this is in 2021. Yeah, so it is obvious that everybody needs to be wary of scams, not just seniors. I have a theory that it's because the younger generation is online so much more, but I'm, I don't know if that's the case. But anyway, we all have to be careful. Absolutely. And I'm sure that that's really a factor, Patty, because they're so comfortable with being online and the internet. They don't question that somebody could be not telling the truth. Right. So um, another interesting fact while investment and romance scams top the list in terms of the amount of dollars lost, the largest number of reports came from people who were trying to buy something that they saw marketed on social media. 
Yes, and like the victim that you were telling us about who was trying to buy car parts, only the car parts never came. That's right, and this is typical. 70% of the people who reported this kind of scam said they placed an order, but they never got the product. And when they were asked where they saw these products advertised, they said Facebook or Instagram. So I recently heard a very scary story about a fake kidnapping where the scammer obviously used information that he got on social media. And Vicki, I really believe that those fake kidnapping cases are the most frightening of all. And what we've been hearing is that these frequently happen to victims who either live in Mexico or who have relatives who live in Mexico. And remember, real kidnappings are not that uncommon in Mexico, so it makes sense that that's where these scams would occur because it has a basis in reality. So here's what happened in this case. My friend's mother-in-law, who lived in Mexico, got a phone call supposedly from her niece, very frightened young person saying that she had been kidnapped and she needed her aunt to pay ransom. Now here's where social media comes in. The niece had a special nickname for her aunt. And when the scammer called, the scammer used that nickname to address her aunt. And it was not a common nickname. It was something only the family would have known. That must have made the scam seem very believable. And as you mentioned, kidnappings are not all that uncommon in Mexico. How very frightening. Also, this is interesting. The victim was wealthy, making it more likely that she would be able to pay the ransom. So it makes sense that she was targeted. The scammer probably knew this. And finally, the scammer's voice sounded just like the voice of her niece. You know, that's amazing. I don't know if you remember, Vicki, but one time uh, I think we had Dayton on and he told us that they can um, use some equipment to alter voices to make it sound just like someone else, or maybe they were just coincidentally sounded like that person. I don't know which, but it must have been so very frightening. So what happened? Well, another family member thankfully was present when the phone call came in and that family member was suspicious. So she called the niece on her own phone and thankfully the niece answered and was with her mother baking cookies. What a <laughs> relief. Ah. And so what should someone do if they get one of these scary calls? Well, the FBI had a bulletin out on these fake kidnapping scams also, and here's what they said. First of all, remain calm. Easier said than done when your heart starts beating like crazy and you're just terrified that it really is a, a relative. But they, the FBI suggests that you try and get as much information from the scammer as possible, including a phone number, if you can. They also suggested, and this seems to me to be taking a bit of a chance, hang up and call a family member to check out the information, which is what happened in the story that I just told you, only it was somebody else who thankfully was present. Then contact local law enforcement or the FBI. But if you're convinced that you really do need to wire money, talk to your local bank and tell them what's going on and see what suggestions they might have. And I know firsthand how scary that can be because uh, my daughter was told that I was kidnapped a few years back and she was scared to death yeah. and they wouldn't let her get off the phone or they, you know, tried to tell her that, you know, I would be hurt if she hung up the phone and she was hysterical, even though her mother helps host scam squad, you would think <laughs> she would know better. But when you're in that situation, it just scares you to death. That's right. And this is what the scammers count on, that they're going to mm -hmm. terrify you. All of a sudden, all of your reason goes out the window and you're operating from pure emotion. And that's the place that they want to get you into. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thanks. That's such a great reminder, because unfortunately, I think we're making a dent where people know about these scams. But unfortunately, they're just not stopping. They're just growing. More and more people are trying to perpetrate them. So our best defense is just to know what's going on so that we don't fall for them. Absolutely. I, I sort of was happy to hear that the 
older generation were not the ones getting scammed most often. Makes mm -hmm. me feel like maybe all of this uh, um, social interest, social media around scams is really getting the attention of seniors and they are more on guard than the mm -hmm. young people. Yeah, that is a really good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great point, Vicki. Well, You're doing a good job. Thank you, <laughs> as are you. Thank you. <laughs> We're making our little dent, aren't we? Yes, we are. So here's some good news. Uh, this is the headline from the Department of Justice, the U.S. Attorney's Office, Nigerian man sentenced for wire fraud. Now, this was a guy that um, was scamming a lot of people here in the United States, but what he did he and his co-conspirators who were working out of um, Nigeria were able to hack into a couple's email account. And here's what they did. I found this interesting. They were watching the account for a while. They were watching the email account to see what was going on with this couple. And they discovered that this couple were in the middle of a real estate transaction. So they sent an email pretending to be the seller, asking the couple to use alternate wiring instructions when making a payment for the property. And ultimately, of course, they were directing the money into one of their accounts, not the account that it should have gone into. So unfortunately, this couple fell for it and um, they sent a $700,000 wire transfer to the scammer's account. Now, this couple must have alerted the FBI very quickly because the FBI was able to track this money down and they got everything back except for about $131,000. So that really is the good news. And the better news is that they were able to extradite this scammer who was living in Spain. They brought him back to the United States um, they indicted him, they prosecuted him, and he was recently convicted and sentenced for wire fraud. So I tell these stories to really encourage people to please report scams to the FBI. It can make a big difference. Yeah, absolutely, Vicki. That is a good story. And another reminder, if anything seems unusual, you know, when you're closing on a house and have to wire a large sum of money, to an escrow officer or uh, there's some something that changes in the midst of those directions like this, pick up the phone and talk to the person that you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Great reminder and great news, Vicki. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Until and, next week. Yes. Bye-bye now. Have a great bye. week.